Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna patch some water leaks. Smells like coffee and I love it. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to go fix a 36 inch pipeline water leak. So excited to share it with you. I've done three as of the time of this recording. The one you're gonna see today was number two. On the very first one, I learned gobs of information. And as you know, I love learning and I'm going to pass that knowledge on to you today. So for those of you that are new, welcome to the channel. Before we get started, I did want to let you know that we have some new products coming to the Aros Welding Store. If you want to get notified about these projects, projects, products for the holiday season, you can go to our website, aroswelding.com, scroll all the way to the bottom. You should be able to punch in your name and email. That will put you on our email list and you will get an email whenever these products launch. I also wanted to let all the business owners know about the new course that we are creating. It is a branding and marketing course. If you want to get notified whenever it launches, you can go to aroswelding.school. Again, scroll all the way to the bottom. Actually, you may not have to do that on that one. There's a bar at the top that tells you about the new course that we're creating. You can click that and it'll take you to the sign up page. Again, name and email. That'll put you on the email list and we will send you an email whenever it is up for pre-sale. All right, top off your coffee and enjoy the video. All right, so here's the project. Yes, that is a wood peg holding this water in the pipe right now. Our goal is to weld a six inch flange onto this 36 inch pipe. This reminds me of my pipeline days. No wonder I was so excited to learn because it's night and day different from the pipelines I'm used to welding on. In the whole eight years I pipeline welded, I did a very little uh, integrity work that's known as maintenance work, or some of you may have heard the term live work. In other words, these pipelines that have gas running through them, natural gas running through them, or even oil, they have to do reroutes, they have to do um, section replacements, and a lot of times they wanna do it without shutting down the line. In other words, they, they wanna keep gas flowing through it, but they still need to repair it. So they have a process to do that. And from being around it and knowing guys that have done more of that type of work than I have, it is way different than a water line. <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be driving a wood peg in a, you know, gas or oil pipeline, you know, to fix it. So it's just, it's kind of hysterical. It kind of reminds me of, it makes me think of like a cartoon for some reason, because it's just funny to drive a wood peg in a piece of pipe. But anyway, super cool, super fun, and uh, excited to share it with you. So yes, that's a wood peg, uh, drove in the pipe. On the first one that I done, I learned real quick that that wood peg can be touchy. The first one I did, it must not have been drove in real good, because I, I got to you know, grinding around and trying to clean it up to get ready to weld on it, and that wood peg kind of bumped loose, and I grabbed onto it and tried to drive it in there, but I was real nervous because I didn't want to drive it too hard because I thought it might split it or something. I didn't know. I'd never, you know what I mean, plugged a water line with a wood stick before. So them guys come down in the hole and I just stood there waiting on them holding the stick because I didn't want to mess it up. I didn't want to get all wet. So they, they come down there and they hit it with the proper tappage, if you will. So kind of a fun story. So I learned real quick to be gentle and careful around the wood peg. So this 36 inch water pipeline was laid in, I don't remember the date, but I know 70s comes to mind, but I could be wrong, but it's been in the ground for 30, 40 plus years, I'm, if I remember right. And uh, it's coated in tar, and then it's got, outside of the tar, it's got, I'm not sure what you would call it, but it reminds me of weed fabric in the little gardening that I've done. So to prep it, you gotta, or what I did was take my pocket knife and cut away some of the weed fabric. And then the uh, couple of times, the two first ones, including this one that you're watching now, there wasn't that thick of tar and the tar just kind of broke off. Whether there was tar sticking or not, I used my wire brush on my grinder and just prepped it, cleaned it up around the wood peg, big enough for this six inch flange that we got to put on here. So that's all I did to prep it. And then this flange on this weld that you're watching, I did not have to saddle it. Somebody, somebody had already saddled it. 
to fit this 36 inch pipe. On the third leak that I fixed, the six inch flange was not saddled. So I had to saddle it myself. And fun fact, the back corners of my current welding bed is essentially quartered 36 inch pipe. So I was able to stay up at my truck and use my vise and then get that saddle put in that six inch flange. And I was able to use the back corner of my truck to check to make sure that saddle was fitting good up against 36 inch pipe. I'm using 332 7018. I ended up putting two passes around the outside and one pass on the inside. You'll get close ups of both of those after we're done here. Those of you that are new to the mobile welding or stick welding industry, you might be asking yourself, Austin, how are you not getting shocked because your welding lead is laying in the water? From my 16, 17 years of mobile welding, stick welding, uh, eight years of pipeline welding and welding in ditches just like you see here, the only scenario that I know of, there could be more, but the only one that I have experienced numerous times where you get shocked is if my glove, if my gloves were wet, specifically the glove that I was holding my welding rod with, get a new welding rod out of the bucket, holding onto the welding rod, put it in my stinger, whether I'm standing in water, standing on dry ground, uh, wearing rubber boots, doesn't matter. From, again, from my experience, that doesn't matter. That is when you get shocked. <laughs> the remedy to that is to put latex gloves underneath your welding gloves or just get dry gloves. But there are some situations, some parts of the world where it rains a lot, where you may have to weld with your gloves slightly wet because it doesn't take much moisture. If that moisture gets the slightest bit all the way through your glove, it, you'll get shocked when you go to put your electrode in your stinger. So that's the only scenario that I know about. Like I said, there could be more, but just wanted to let you know for those of you that may be nervous to you know, stick weld or be nervous about the shocking factor,
This right here is a prime example of where a pancake hood would be really handy because right now the sun is shining directly up my hood and it's literally blinding me. I can't see what I'm doing. In fact, here in a minute I take my hand and I put it underneath my chin trying to block that light. So a pancake is fit up against your eyes like goggles and that, that eliminates this issue. Done deal. 7018 all the way. It's the only rod I used. Well, at the inside, too. And then after the welding was done, the real hero came in. This is Charlie. He's the foreman here on the city of Stillwater's uh, water crew, or one of their crews. And uh, I actually stayed and helped him on this one because I wanted to know what the process was like. And he said this one was pretty low pressure because it was at the, uh, like, it was kind of in a higher elevation. For those of you that don't know, I also learned this whenever I was, whenever I was pipelining, but gravity plays a big part in a pipeline and the flow of whatever's in the pipeline, especially if it's liquid like water, whenever it comes to the top, it's kind of lower pressure, but whenever, if you're working on a piece of pipe that's down in the valley kinda, that gets to be a lot more pressure. So this one was kind of at a higher elevation, if you will, and didn't have very bad pressure. And there wasn't nobody around to help. He said he could do it himself, but I wanted to help didn't get any footage of it because I was helping, but I was just glad to see the process and glad to help. After I helped him get the initial couple of bolts in, he tightened up all the bolts as you see him doing here. So by the way, this is called a blind, the flat piece that goes, that, that he's bolting onto this flange. And also for those of you who may not know, to actually hold water, for a flange to actually hold water or, or anything for that matter, you gotta have a gasket in between here in between the flange and the blind. So there is a gasket in between this flange and blind. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you for being here. Like I said, check out our website, arosswelding.com. Make sure and get on our email list if you wanna get notified whenever the new products hit our store. And if you need more gift ideas, they're on the homepage of our website, arosswelding.com. There will be a page called My Favorites, close to the bottom of the homepage. A lot of good gift ideas for your fellow welders over there. And lastly, to get notified about the branding and marketing course that we're creating for all of you business owners, whether it's a welding business or any other type of business, if you want to get notified about the branding and marketing course, go to arosswelding.school, scroll all the way to the bottom, punch in your name and email, and you will get notified whenever the course is up for pre-sale. Have an awesome weekend, awesome day, and remember, learn something every day.